Let's look at the molecular orbitals in the bonding in butadiene. Butadiene, shown here, four carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens, and you'll notice alternating double bonds. Each carbon is sp2 hybridized. Now, you'll often see these kind of molecules written in a shorthand notation, just this scratch notation where you have each vertex is a carbon and each line is a bond and the hydrogens are left off altogether. So you know that each carbon has to have four total bonds. So this carbon here at this vertex has one, two, three, so there must be a hydrogen here, four. So shorthand notation for writing butadiene looks like this. But with these sp2 hybridized carbons, we'll have p orbitals left over on each carbon. If I sp2 hybridize, there's one p on each of these carbon atoms. So those four p orbitals, one on each carbon, can overlap to form pi bonds. The p orbitals are above and below the plane. So the molecule is planar, and the p orbitals look like this. So here's the carbon. Now I have each carbon, and notice 120 degree bond angles. That's the sp2 hybridized. SP2 leaves behind a p orbital, and here they are above and below the plane of the molecule. So a p orbital left over on each carbon. I can form from these one, two, three, four atomic orbitals, four molecular orbitals. And now this is going to be interesting because the orbital that I form, rather than just spanning two atoms, can span four atoms. So I'll form a molecular orbital that looks like this, a long, extended, delocalized orbital. And by delocalized, I mean it's over several nuclei. The electron can delocalize. There's a probability of finding it all the way along the length of the molecule. So a second possibility is to have molecular orbitals that look like this. Here's another possibility where you have a node now in the middle. That's a higher energy. Remember, more nodes, higher energy. And I can continue to a two-node molecular orbital and a three-node molecular orbital. As you go up in number of nodes, of course, you go up in energy. And we're going to scale these as pi and pi star. When you get to these long delocalized orbitals, it's not as clear which is the pi bonding and which is the antibonding orbital. So we'll just take the upper half as antibonding and the lower half as bonding. Now, this is interesting. I said it looks like the electron can delocalize over the length of the molecule. It's as if the electron is trapped in a little box that's the length of the molecule. So the electron has probability all along that molecule, just like the particle in a box that we talked about before. So it's interesting. Even the shapes of these orbitals, these molecular orbitals, are reminiscent of the particle in a box wave functions. Remember, you had a particle in a box wave function with no nodes, and then one with a single node, and then one with two, and one with three. So it's interesting, delocalized electrons along a conjugated system of alternating double bonds behave like particles in a box. So let's just remind ourselves of the particle in a box wave functions. Here they are. They look just like what we just saw, and they are reminiscent of those orbitals, those molecular orbitals, on the conjugated system. And the energies are given by this formula. So this simple formula for the energy can help us understand energy spacing in pi molecular orbitals, if we treat them like a particle in a box. And that's a very good approximation. So the energy levels for a particle in a box, we should remember a couple things. One is as the box gets bigger, the energy levels go as n squared over l squared. Well, l is the length. So longer boxes, the energy levels start to come closer together. They get closer together, and when you get to a very big box, the energy levels are stacked right on top of each other and virtually become continuous. And that's where you'd make the transition from quantum mechanical to classical in a very large box or big particles, you'd have continuous energy levels. You wouldn't have quantized velocities for a marble rolling around in a box. It can go at any velocity. 
a quantum mechanical particle has quantized energies. So small boxes, I have spacing between my energy levels. I also notice that the lowest energy level, energy level 1, is not stopped. It's not zero. So quantum mechanical particles never stop. So a big particle in a box, a macroscopic particle, a marble rolling around in a box, you could bring to a stop at its lowest energy level. Quantum mechanical particles don't stop. And we'll use these kind of approximations about size of the box and the spacing of the energy levels to think about pi molecular orbitals just like the energy levels of a particle in a box.